Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Man in America. I'm your host, Seth Holhouse. So some crazy things are happening with precious metals. You've probably been watching. Gold is now reaching close to $2,400 an ounce. Silver, close to 30 bucks an ounce. It's reaching historic levels, but what's happening is that there's big things happening behind the scenes. So we've talked about this transition of global power from the Western nations over to the BRICS nations, the collapse of the Western financial system, the fiat financial system. So what's also happening further than that though is the precious metals markets and how those affect the big banks and how the big banks that we're used to, these giant cabal banking systems, how they have massive shorts on precious metals, which has allowed them to keep the prices down. But actually now these metals are all shifting to Asia, China, BRICS nations, et cetera. And these banks are losing their con or control and losing their ability to keep their prices down, which is causing their prices to go up. It's killing these banks because they have these massive shorts. The whole situation is, is getting ready to blow up. And also we have banks like UBS coming out saying their price targets are now up to $4,000 an ounce for gold. So what we've been talking about for a long time is happening. It's real. So folks, please enjoy the interview with Dr. Kirk Elliott. Kirk, as usual, it's always great talking to you. Normally, we're talking about issues that are somewhat dire, you know, collapse of the Western financial system, uh, banking, etc. But what's happened this past week or so has been really crazy within precious metals. So let me just pull up uh, a gold, let's see, I got right here, um, gold price, this website, this is why I oftentimes use goldprice.org. So silver, as of right now, recording is up that, you know, almost to $29. Gold is at twenty three sixty four. It's been hovering around twenty four hundred, which yeah. is insane. I remember, you know, back when gold got to close to two thousand, how big of a milestone that was, right? So there's significant, major things happening with this. Amidst we've got the potential war breaking out with Iran and Israel, we've got lots of stuff happening. So. How do you make sense of this and how are the banks making sense? I mean, are they adjusting their price targets? Are they coping with the reality? Are they shorting to try to keep the prices down? Like what's what's going on? This is your world. So walk us through it. Oh boy. So everything that you just said, yes, all of the above. Right? So so we'll start with one of them. Um, so over the weekend, obviously. You know, unless you live in a cave, you realize Iran shot off, you know, 300 drones at Israel. The Iron Dome kicked in and, you know, destroyed like 96 percent of them. Right. So so then it becomes weird and political all of a sudden to start off with, you know, Biden says, hey, Israel, you know, we got your back. We're going to we're going to, you know, come to your aid and help you. And then G7 meets on Sunday. All of them basically say. What, what Iran did was unconscionable. You can't do that. And we need to condemn that action. Except Biden changed his mind, said, we're not going to help you out if you retaliate Israel. It's like, what? It's like, how could 24 hours change his mind, right? So, so turbulence, turmoil. So you've got this, this Iran-Israel conflict happening, right? And so what did Biden say? First of all, we're going to come alongside you, Israel. And then the G7 met on Sunday, and they basically said, we're going to condemn Iran's you know, shooting off of 300 drones on Israel. But then after that meeting, for some reason, weirdly, Biden says, hey, Israel, we're, we're actually not going to come along your side if you decide to retaliate. So completely bipolar, right? So so what is going on here? But all that turbulence, turmoil, chaos, uncertainty actually does horrible things to, to the markets. Stocks, funds, mutual funds don't like that, right? They don't like uncertainty where gold and silver do, right? So, so Biden pretending to be the diplomat of all diplomats saying, hey, let's fix this with diplomacy rather than with military action. you know. But what did they do with Russia when the Russia-Ukraine conflict started? He basically said, we're going to actually cut you off from the SWIFT program, which was basically let's starve out the Russian people, right? Because without SWIFT, you can't get wires coming into your country. You can't get paid for anything. So, so boy, that didn't work at all. Because what did Putin do? Putin went to China and said, hey, China, 
We got kicked out of the SWIFT program and China says, oh, it's okay. We've got something called SIPS, CIPS. It's the equivalent, except it's with the BRICS nations. Let's join together and we'll take care of each other. So that one thing actually caused this massive economic political movement in BRICS, which was already a thing. I mean, the BRICS was already a thing, but it put it on steroids and really locked them in together economically and politically. Well, then Biden did one other thing. He froze their assets. He froze Russian assets, which is a common thing to do in war. If one country owns the country that you're fighting against, says their assets, they're going to freeze them so they can't access them. Well, they happen to have, you know, basically, uh, you know, pretty much, I think it was three quarters of a trillion, like hundreds of billions of dollars worth of gold. It's like, oh, my word. So they, they froze them. So now they can't access it. Well, this is what's caused, and we talked about this briefly, but other countries wanting to repatriate their gold and saying, hey, we don't want what happened to Russia to happen to us. If we walk, you know, get out of lockstep with America somehow, or our ideology doesn't match up, we don't want them to freeze our assets. So let's pull our gold out and take it back to the homeland, right? So Congress got wind of this. And they decided, let's get a, a FOIA request, a Freedom of Information Act, and send it to the Fed. Say, what are the countries that are requesting their gold and how much did you send? That's the request. So what did, what did Jerome Powell say? Eh, not going to give it to you. It's like, what? What's up with the rule of law in America where you can have a congressional subpoena, a Freedom of Information request, and they just say no? Well, I, I mean, so, but it, but it didn't stop there. He, he also said, but the New York Fed has that information, uh, but they're not going to give it to you either. It's like, what? <laughs> it's like, stop dangling this carrot out there and saying you're not going to do anything. I mean, literally, people don't respond to these Congressional Freedom of Information Act requests anymore. It's like rule of law means nothing. So, but there's, it's so much that Congress wants to know how much gold is leaving the country. And for some reason, the Fed doesn't want to disclose that information, probably because it's an awful lot, right? So, you know, looking at the numbers since April, China has had a net import of 160 tons of gold into China. What's America? Minus 134 tons. So plus 160, minus 134. Most of the countries in the BRICS nations are net receivers of gold. Most of the countries in the West are net minus. Right. So there's this shift, this paradigm shift of movement of metals from the West to the East. Right. It's it's something else to, to actually see on paper. But what's happening in reality is a power shift. Right. The America is losing. Sorry. America is losing its financial might as wealth starts to move to the East. So but it doesn't just stop with America. Right. So. So. Janet Yellen, you know, Treasury Secretary, she stuck it to Putin. And she said, hey, you know that gold that we actually froze, those assets that we froze? We're going to give it to Ukraine. It's like, oh, my word, of all the people to give it to, to really tick off Russia, it would be Ukraine, right? So, so she said that. And then it gets worse because in Brussels, the European Union said, Hey Russia, you've been you've had some gold from Romania or something like that since 1915. Uh, you owe Romania 91.5 tons of gold. You know, so Medvedev, you know, in in Russia, I mean, I'm not going to say what he said, but I'll paraphrase it. He said, "F you." <laughs> I mean, that's, he said so. That's what he told him. It's like there's diplomacy right there. They told him to give up their metal to back to Romania, and he basically told them to go pound sand. So here's where all these economic sanctions, freezing of assets, taking something that's not yours and giving to somebody else is absolute theft, right? So, so this is what's happening. And so for Biden to think that he's the king of diplomacy, he's making it worse, right? He's increasing tensions, not reducing tensions. So this is all part of what makes gold and silver go up is increasing tensions. In time of war, there's a flight for quality type of a, of a movement where when people don't respect or understand or, or 
think that everything that's that's normal in the past is no longer normal. And they can't count on stock market returns, bond market returns, real estate. There's a flight for safety. So that's where gold and silver are moving. Now, there's one other piece of this that we need to look at. And that is China lies about everything, right? They, they just do. Well, officially, they have about 5,000 tons of gold in China. So that's what the World Gold Council and people say that they have. Well, unofficially, it's hard to know exactly what they have because they lie about everything. But what we do know, they are the largest gold mining country on the planet, like the largest. They're also, and how much of that mining of gold do they actually sell? Zero. They keep it all. They're also the largest purchaser of gold on the planet. So get a load of this. They're largest producer. They keep it all. Largest purchaser from elsewhere. So estimates are that they probably have about 30,000 tons of gold. So with, with China, India, all the other BRICS nations, Asia, they now have majority ownership of all the precious metals on the planet. So here's where the West has lost its price-fixing capability because they no longer have the majority ownership. So what does that mean? So the West, the Fed and you know London, they've wanted to suppress the price of gold or silver because it's a slap in the face when it goes up against their banking system. Okay. So now that they don't own majority of all the gold and silver in the world, and China does, what does China want it for? They want it to back their central bank digital currency. They want to be the world's reserve currency. They want the price to go up. So now that they own the majority, the price fixing capability of the West is being diminished. This is partly why you're seeing gold hit all time highs, oh, like every I single see. day. Why I silver see. is doing even more. So because- basically, sorry. So basically, that, that something clicked for me there. That whoever owns the majority of the assets has control over that market. Like, hypothetically, if I owned 80% of Apple, my own actions could drive Apple prices up or down. Say I want to sell off 3% one day, maybe the prices are going to go down, right? Vice versa. So because the, the, this massive ownership is shifting, like you mentioned, US being minus, or I think, 130 130,000 tons. I forget how many tons it was. 130 tons or um, minus 135 in America plus 160 in China. Exactly. So you have these the precious metals shifting from the east to the west, you know, to, to simplify it. But with that shift is happening, uh, what's the control over the market manipulation is also shifting. And so, so this is interesting. So I'll tell you one quick thing. Is so I, I was listening to an interview with Dave du, uh, David Dubine recently for Adapt 2030, who I want to get on soon. And so he lives over in Asia. And what he was saying is that the government messaging over there is so strong, encouraging the citizens there to buy precious metals. So imagine that. Imagine if, if in the United States, the government was telling people, hey, folks, you, should, you better buy gold and silver. But it's not. Obviously, like it's like the opposite of what we're being told. Whereas in Asia, the Met, they're actually telling their own citizens. And, I, and he kind of, he, it was an interesting point that he was making. He was like, look, it's America that's going to be left with its pants down, basically, because no one owns precious metals over there. Whereas over in Asia, and I used to do a lot of business when I was back in the jewelry industry going over to Asia. And I can tell you, they love precious metals. Like every family has precious metals. It's, it's part of wedding dowries. It, like the, the Indian culture, they, as part of their wedding gifts, it's high carat gold, uh, gold jewelry. Like it's so significant over there. And even if you go, go to Hong Kong, you walk through Hong Kong, and like the different business districts, there's stores full of just gold, like gold, everything, gold statues, gold bracelets, because that's what they buy. It's so part of their culture. So it's interesting that that, that shift that you're talking about that's happening at a massive geopolitical level is also something that's affecting on the ground the average person living in those different countries. So just want to throw that out there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's absolutely true and accurate. So That's the power shift, though, that we've seen from the West to the East. Folks, how do you feel? Me, I feel great. And one of the reasons I believe I feel better is because I take Balance of Nature's fruits and veggies in a capsule. 
They have an amazing story how this product was developed by Dr. Douglas Howard. It's right there on their website. Balance of Nature receives over a thousand success stories every single month. They have hundreds of thousands of customers who've purchased billions of capsules of their fruits and veggies over the past 20 years. You should check it all out on their website. Their products are gluten-free and non-GMO, and they contain no added sugars or synthetics. I think if you're looking for something to make you feel better naturally, you should definitely give Balance of Nature a try. In fact, order today. Whether you order online or call them direct, you must use the promo code SETH, that's S-E-T-H, to get this special offer of 35% off plus $10 off any additional sets plus free shipping, and the money-back guarantee. So call them at 800-2468-751 and use discount code SETH or order online at balanceofnature.com and use discount code SETH to get 35% off. And they're playing a masterful game at it, right? And so, but the motive is completely different. The West wanted to drive prices down to build up their banking system. The East wants to build bring prices up because they want it to back their currency and they're trying to be the world's reserve currency, right? So I think that this new shift is actually going to change things moving forward. This is why you've seen gold hit all-time highs day after day after day after day. This is why silver is dramatically outperforming, but China's playing a different battle now. So they've already got tens of thousands of tons of, of gold, you know, upwards of 30,000 tons. So over the weekend, story came out how instead of allocating into gold, they're now starting to allocate into silver because here's where economic warfare comes into place. JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America have massive short positions in silver, massive, so much that, that I think for every dollar that silver moves up, they lose like 400 million or something crazy. I mean, it's, it's, it's an insane number. Well, last week, silver was approaching $30 an ounce, and then it dove down in the afternoon like over a dollar, right? It came down to like $27.95 or something like that, or $28. Well, the numbers were coming out. There were 1.2 billion ounces of silver shorted that afternoon. Put that into perspective. There's about 800 million ounces of physical silver mined in a whole year of all mines globally. So they shorted in one afternoon more silver than what's mined in an entire year. Somebody didn't want the price to hit 30 because that's a very psychological level, right? But Actually, here's here, where I think it's the banks. Here you go, Kurt. Because here's the, this is it. That line right here, when silver was approaching yeah. $29, it was at, yeah. actually right here, it was at, tw um, actually I can't see the exact price, but yeah, you can see it. Look at that drop. So you're saying that what was happening is that on this chart, this chart you see silver breaking out, right? It, it's, it's really heading towards the moon. At this moment then, just before the weekend hits, interestingly enough, this is when you're saying all these banks pull these massive short positions, which then, like, you, this is not a natural drop. Right. This, is, this is not a natural drop off in that's, a price, right? That's, that's what you're talking about? No. Not when it's going up the way that it was. And so these are short positions. Now, we don't know who did it, but I'm assuming it's the banks because the higher silver goes and realize it's gone up over $6 an ounce in the last two months. They lose so much money for every dollar it goes up because they have these short positions. So what did China decide to do? They realized how big these banks are, how much short positions they have in silver over the years, and they're now allocating silver. If you can get rid of the silver supply and they own it, you can cause a short squeeze, cause physical delivery of that. If they can't get it because all they, who owns it? They're like Asia. Well, they're not going to release it at good prices. And they're going to cause the covering of these shorts with physical assets rather than with money. They put Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase out of business. They're conducting an economic warfare battle against our banks to destroy Western banking. I mean, this is fascinating. It's like a soap opera playing itself out, right? But but they're winning. They're absolutely winning. It's like they they showed up to the chess match and and we showed up with I don't know Skippo or something like that. It's like it's like wrong game, and and seriously, a childish game rather than than the serious one. But here's where it gets really interesting for all of the people who have been watching Man in America for a while and, and invested into silver, right? So, 
So you look at what the big banks now with all of this backdrop of where we're headed with gold, Bank of America predicted on this move, gold's going to hit $3,000 an ounce. Goldman Sachs predicted $1,700 and UBS $4,000. Okay. So big banks are notoriously horrible in understating the growth of gold. I mean, they're always understating it. It always does more than what they think it's going to do. But they're expecting it to hit these numbers. The average of those three is $3,200 an ounce. So we're allocating into silver, not gold. Why? Because silver's outperforming. When you look at historically, how many ounces of silver does it take to buy one ounce of gold? The ratio has been about 20 to one meaning you multiply the price of silver times 20 gets you the gold price or way above that. We're at like last week and a half ago, we're at like 91 to one, right? So as the ratio continues to come down, silver is going to outperform. So let me show you something here. At their level, predicted level of $3,200 gold at 80 to one ratio, which we're about 81 now, we came down a good seven points in the last week and a half. Right, so we're hitting this ratio, just like we said it's going to do. We're going to actually approach 20. But at 80 to 1, that would put silver at $40 an ounce. At 60 to 1, that would put silver at $53 an ounce. At 40 to 1, $83 an ounce. 30 to 1, $107 an ounce. And at 20 to 1, 165 That's just with gold at 3200 But what's going to happen is, Gold's going to continue to go up and probably go past 3,200. And so these numbers are actually probably going to be low. But this is why we allocate into silver, because when we get to 60 to 1, which realize we were at 90 to 1 a week and a half ago. Today, we're at 81 to 1, right? So, so that's coming down pretty quick. But at 60 to 1, that's one third of, you know, off of, the, of the high. You know, so what does that mean? We could sell a third of our silver, go into gold, even with an 8% cost of ownership. We increase your number of ounces of gold by like 23, 24%. And no extra, you don't have to put any new money into it, right? You just get that much more gold. See, this is what's really exciting and why we've been allocating into gold or into silver instead of gold this whole time is because of that ratio and how we can compound ounces moving forward. I mean, this is just exciting to look at. And now we've got political, economic, military actions all corresponding at the same time. The technicals, the fundamentals. And it's like, um, how, can, how can we have a smile on our face with wars and rumors of wars and a collapsing economy? Because they are signals for us to do something. And if we see those signals act accordingly, we can be in the right place at the right time and thrive, Seth. This is just mind blowing. I mean, it's because I, you know, we've been talking about this for a long time and, and I'll pull up a, just the price chart just for, uh, let's see, where's the one I found here. Um, okay. So looking at where, cause I remember this actually when silver was around 18 bucks an ounce, Right. So let's just say back, this was about a year and a half ago. This is a two year chart. Silver was at its low point, just below $18 an ounce. Like I remember at that point, I went out and bought a bunch of silver. I was thinking, hey, great. You know, this seems pretty low. This is when it was hovering, you know, 20, low, low 20s. And it's like, okay, so I'll go get some. So let's just say at that point, say someone bought $175,000 worth of silver, right? Which would be, was that 10,000 ounces? If my math serves me correctly. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So then you're saying, you see, you have $175,000 sitting in that. So in a year and a half, that $175,000 would now be worth, right? $280,000. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's like this, this is, this is, this is, up, this is also, this is validating. It feels good because I, I'm so cautious about recommending products. Like I've, I've got so many companies that have offered me a lot of money to recommend products that I don't believe in, right? Bitcoin and crypto being one of them. I'm just not a believer in it. I can't recommend it. It doesn't matter how much money I can make off it. I just won't do it. But I really believe in this. And what's crazy is that everything that we've been talking about is coming to pass. And now that you paint this picture, this is a whole new thing. So I've, I've been well aware of the manipulation of the precious metals prices. And now it's crazy to piece this all together 
that the Western banks have these ma- massive shorts against precious metals as a mechanism to keep the prices down because they own a lot of them. And, and that allows them to keep buying up more, allows the military industrial complex to keep buying up more precious metals, more silver, especially for manufacturing, et cetera. So with, as you're saying, though, that now that ownership is shifting to the East, to the, to the BRICS nations and to China, and they are now able to take control and, and actually get rid of that price manipulation. It's doing multiple things at once. But one thing, it's, you, as you talked about, what it's doing is it's now it's crushing all these banks that have all these short positions. So it becomes another mechanism of economic warfare, not to mention if they own this much precious metals, they want prices. China wants gold to be at 5,000 an ounce, 10,000 an ounce. They want silver to be at 200 an ounce because it benefits yeah. them because now they're the ones that own these massive majorities between them and the other BRICS nations and their citizenry, right? Whereas like in the West, it's like, well, our government wants to collapse the banking system because it's, they're, they're, they can't print any more money. They want to bring in central bank digital currency. They, they don't want us to be wealthy. They want us to be poor. They want the right. average American to have all their money tied up in a 401k stock market you know, in your savings account earning 2% per year. So that when the whole thing falls apart, we're all sitting there saying, oh, we're screwed. Uh, can I go get some bread in the bread line, please? Like, that's what they want. So this is just crazy because now you pulled up, I'll pull up the article again um, about, let's see right here. When you, okay, about the bank predictions, Goldman 2700, BOA 3000, UBS 4000. Like, this is crazy, but it makes sense. So the people that have been maybe looked at as being crazy for saying, oh, look, silver could hit a hundred bucks an ounce, you know, even more than that. Some people saying up to 600 bucks an ounce, it's starting to make more sense because if the mechanisms that are being used via these deep state cabal banks to control these precious metals prices, if those mechanisms, that power is being taken away from them by the BRICS nations, they can no longer suppress it where's the real, where's the real top, right? Like, where is the real, like, what is silver worth? What is gold worth? don't know, right? If you just look at the ratio and where we think gold is going, well, it's like 165 an ounce, but this is where that's if gold hits 3,200. What if gold hits 5,000? What if it hits 7,000? What if the old ratio of the past means nothing anymore? Because back the historical ratio didn't take into consideration the demand that we have for silver now when it's running out for electric vehicles, for, for solar cells, for fuel cell technology, Weapons. for aerospace, for Department of Defense, all of that requ- and all electronics. You know, this ratio of, of silver to gold goes way back before some of these things were even things, right? So it's not like a... A 65-inch Sony LCD TV is made of 100% silver. No, it might have an ounce or two of it, you know, for solder points or whatever, but without it, they can't have a final product. This is why prices can go through the roof quickly because if you're those manufacturers, you're going to say, well, I don't care if silver's 25, uh, we'll offer 40, we'll offer $80 an ounce, we'll offer $100 an ounce, it doesn't matter because we use so little of it, we're just going to pass it on to the consumer anyways. And so if they run out and it's needed for these things, imagine how how Tesla would actually tank if Elon Musk couldn't get silver for the, for the batteries, right? Or the fuel cell technology that's used or solar, which is all part of the globalist agenda to have a green world, right? And it's like climate change agenda. So some of these prices could absolutely go through the ceiling, Seth, because the demand is there, both consumer demand and government demand because of some of these agendas. And we get to take advantage of that demand and lack of supply when we understand how these pieces fit together. And that's exactly what we do every single week. Crazy. I'm just thinking about, you mentioned silver being you know over a hundred bucks an ounce. Well, just imagine that same equation I mentioned, say a year and a half ago, you put say $175,000 into silver at $1,750 an ounce, roughly. Folks, at the very heart of our democracy lies a principle we hold sacred, free speech. It's the cornerstone that supports every freedom we cherish. 
Yet in today's digital age, discussions about our wealth, our rights, and our future are being silenced or overshadowed in mainstream narratives, leaving many feeling voiceless in conversations crucial to our financial independence and security. This is where wealth protection research steps in, armed with a mission that's never been more critical. Wealth Protection Research is not a financial advisory firm. They're defenders of free speech committed to giving a voice to the silenced. Wealth Protection Research tirelessly seeks out financial experts. These are the voices that challenge prevailing narratives, especially as we navigate the uncertainties of the 2024 election. Wealth Protection Research has created a 2024 election wealth protection report. This free report highlights the three best ideas for protecting and growing your money heading into the 2024 election. It contains ideas the mainstream media won't even touch, and listeners can get it completely free. So, text IDEAS to 76626 to claim your free copy. If you believe in the sanctity of free speech and the importance of financial freedom, then act now. So text IDEAS to 76626 to claim your free copy of this 2024 election protection report. It's time to widen the scope of what we're told to hear the ideas the establishment does not think you can handle and to take control of our financial destinies. So folks today, text IDEAS to 76626 to claim your free copy. That $175,000 a year and a half ago would then be a million dollars. Yeah, multiply it by six or seven. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. And, and this isn't just quackery. I mean, what, like, what we're seeing is like, that's where everything's pointing. Like China's not slowing down. They're not stepping on the brakes. They're not saying, hey, you know what? Uh, you know, let, let's, let's let the America survive a couple more years. Let, let, let's let their dollar continue to crush us and continue to fund America's wars and fund the operations of the deep state and fund the military yeah. industrial complex with all the black budget stuff. Like they're, they're not slowing down. Russia's not slowing down. BRICS aren't slowing right. down. The banks here aren't getting any healthier. So, I mean, this is an election year. You mentioned the very beginning. It's like, yeah, when you have turmoil and turbulence and everything, I'm thinking jokingly, well, since it's an election year, gold prices are probably going to go down because it's going to be so calm because our elections are always free and fair and there's no riots and everyone feels really safe here in America. It's like, not really. <laughs> it's the opposite. Right. Man, what a, what, a crazy, what a crazy ride it's been. <laughs> I mean, this is like, it has been and it's, it's going to get wacky. It's going to get wackier. It's not getting more calm. Ah, oh, man. Well, so in uh, kind of summarizing, if folks do want to reallocate, put, you know, pull up their website. We have a website, goldwithseth.com. It takes you here, while well, it's still loading, to this particular website. If you guys, if anyone watching, if you want to contact Kirk and his team, if you have somebody else that you trust, great. Make sure you can trust them. <laughs> That's the one thing. There's a lot of charlatans. Um, but this is Kirk's website. Fill out your email, first name, last name, phone number sets up an email or sets up an appointment with one of Kirk's wealth advisors or 720-605-3900. Um, that's how they can get a hold of you. I mean, I would say it's crazy because, you know, you always want to think about, you know, buy low, sell high, right? So, you know, buy at its low point. So yeah, if you could go back in time and buy a bunch of silver at you know, 20 bucks an ounce, great. But I think the next thing is, is saying, okay, look at where these things are going. It's like the, the, the train is starting to leave the station. And once it leaves, when silver's at 150 bucks an ounce or whatever it could be, it's going to be tough to get. It's going to be really, right. it's going to become what, Kurt, what Cliff High says, it'll be unobtainium. It'll be so difficult to even get because everyone's going to be chasing after it. So, man, what a, what a wild ride. What makes me feel happy, it makes me feel confident and happy that, you know what? Like with all the people that said, hey, Seth, you trying to sell gold or silver again? Like, yeah. I'm looking out for you. Like I'm trying to help take care of you. The same reason I'm saying, hey, buy emergency food, buy ammo, right? It's like, this is not the world that your parents grew up in anymore. And there's right. crazy stuff coming down the pipeline. Absolutely. And this is how we can have a smile on our face. So we can't fix some of the politics. We can't fix the social decay, you know, right away. But what we can do is act on our own finances, take advantage of these trends rather than them taking advantage of us. So I do encourage you to call. We'll hear your fears, listen to you, understand what you want to do, income, growth, what are you looking for? But really, everybody should be looking at now as asset protection. Don't let stupid government policies that we can't control erode everything we've worked our whole life to accumulate. This is what metals help you safeguard from. Exactly. It's, yeah, it's a good point. It's not about 
some speculative investment and hoping it goes somewhere it's about. I mean, that's a bonus, right? Like if, if it skyrockets, hey, great. But it's about protection. It's about protecting Absolutely. your assets. It's no different than saving seeds and making sure that you can grow food the next, you know, the next grow season. Uh, it's just making sure that you have something that can't be taken away. So Kirk, it's it's always fun, but this is a particularly fun show. I feel like I feel happy. It wasn't like this show of like, okay, yeah, they're rolling out the central bank digital currency and we're gonna be digital slaves soon. And I mean, I, of course we had to cover that because it's it's reality, but it's nice to be able to be like, hey, whoa, look what's happening. This is really going. And everything we've been talking about, it's real. It's not some sales pitch. Like this is real, folks. This is actually happening in the world right now. Oh, for sure it is. And and we're here to help. Kirk, thank you so much. It's always fun having you on. Take care and God bless. You bet. God bless. Bye-bye. Folks, I have a quick message for you. Look, the 2024 election is do or die for the globalists and communists that have infiltrated our country and are currently running it. And they either have to win or they're going to destroy America so nothing is left either way. And if you're the person that's watching this show and following this information, Unfortunately, you have the weight on your shoulders of making sure that your family is prepared, especially as we head into this next year and this next election cycle, because unfortunately, I think it's going to get rough. And one of the ways I know they're going to target us is through our food supply. You can see all the food factories burned down. You can see the warnings of coming famines and food shortages and everything like that. And food is one of the number one ways totalitarian regimes have always used to control the population is destroy the food supply. So if you don't have at least two, three, four, five, six months worth of stored food, I highly recommend you take that very seriously. Because look, as I mentioned, if you're the person that's watching this, you're the person that carries the burden of making sure your family is prepared. I would recommend at least six months, if not a year of storable food. So if things go haywire, whether it's grid down or terrorist attack from what's coming across the border, that your family can safely stay in place and you can feed your family. So folks, today, go to heavensharvest.com and make sure you get your storable food that'll last for up to 25 years. Just in case things go south, you know that you have what's going to take to feed your family, which is so, so critical for us to get through this next stage of history. So go to heavensharvest.com today, order your food that will last up to 25 years, and use promo code SETH to save 15% on your entire order. Again, that's heavensharvest.com and use promo code SETH, S-E-T-H, to save 15% on your entire order.